What's up guys, Nick Young here from Seller Tradecraft and today we're going to be talking about the three reasons why your product or your Amazon business might not be profitable on Amazon. All right, if you haven't already yet, please subscribe to get all the latest and greatest updates on Amazon Private Label. We're constantly pushing out new content and I want you guys to be up to date about all the new changes that Amazon is rolling out on a day-to-day -day basis. All right guys, so let's go ahead and dive in. So people constantly reach out to us on Seller Tradecraft and ask about you know, their products on Amazon. And oftentimes we find that you know, these guys aren't profitable when they're selling the products. And so this is a problem that a lot of sellers face. And this is something that we see that's very, very common. A lot of people don't dig into the numbers. They don't understand what's going wrong. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna talk about the three predominant reasons that people aren't profitable when they sell their private label products on Amazon. So let's go ahead and first talk about the first reason why people aren't profitable. Number one is that they don't understand their numbers. And that's one of the most important factors. Amazon takes a hefty percentage of every single product that you sell. So it's really important that you understand everything that's involved. Number one, know what your cost of goods landed is. That means including the shipment cost per unit and adding that into your landed cost. And then you will also want to factor in all the fees that are involved. There's the FBA fulfillment fees, which is going to vary depending on the size and the weight of your product. And there's also the referral fee that Amazon takes, which is usually around that 15% mark. Now, what you want to do is you want to subtract all those factors. You want to subtract the FBA fees and you want to subtract out the referral fees and you want to subtract out the COGS, right? The cost of good landed from your product sales price. And finally, you want to include one more important factor, which is the cost of PPC, of promoting your product. Most Amazon sellers don't include this. And oftentimes, they're spending a ridiculous amount of money on their PPC advertising, and they don't understand how profitable they are on a per SKU basis. Now, I can speak to this personally, because when we first started out in our first year, year and a half of running the business, we were way too focused on revenue and not focused enough on profit. And what ended up happening is that we realized a year and a half later into starting business that most of our SKUs, I would say close to 60 to 70% of them, weren't even profitable. In fact, that we had been so focused on revenue that we didn't realize that we were actually weren't making a profit on, all, on a lot of the SKUs that we were selling. So that's why it's really important that you use a tool, kind of like Seller Legend, which we highly recommend. There's also Hello Profit. There's a variety of different tools out there that weren't available when we first started. And I highly recommend that you input all of your expenses and your costs into these tools so that you understand on a per SKU basis whether that product is profitable or not. And as you start scaling up your business and you add more and more SKUs, it's gonna be even more important for you to track all this information on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, when you actually put together all these costs and subtract them from the sales price, what you come up with is what we call the contribution margin. And this is a number that we track very, very closely. And the reason why is because this takes out all the expenses that's taken from Amazon that I've mentioned before, and it gives you the actual profit that you have after everything is said and done. And you, what you wanna do, guys, is you wanna go ahead and make sure that you understand what your contribution margin is. And the difference between contribution margin and gross margin is that contribution margin takes into account PPC. Gross margin only takes into account the fees and the COGS, okay? So we wanna take that a next step further and track the contribution margin. And for us, you know, we're very stringent about the margins that we're looking for. We wanna make sure that our contribution margin is at minimum 25 to 30% net of all the expenses involved. A lot of sellers don't even do the math here and that's where they really get stuck and that's where they become unprofitable. So make sure you stick to a contribution margin number and that you're tracking this very carefully in the profit tracking tools that we recommend. Now, the next reason why a lot of sellers don't make a profit and they aren't successful selling private label on Amazon is that they're way too married to their product or their product idea. Now, we've run into this constantly. At this point, we've launched over 200 to 250 different SKUs on Amazon. And one common problem that I would face is getting too stuck on a product idea and trying to make something work when really there was no basis for this product to continue working. And so this is what happens to a lot of sellers. They're too focused on a product. Maybe they put too much money down for a product. And what's up, what ends up happening is they try to make this product better and better without realizing that maybe this, comp, this product is just a dud from the get-go. In which case, it's very, very important that you're willing to let go of products that aren't doing well. You wanna start thinking about your private label business as like a finance company or a portfolio of products. 
Don't get too stuck. Become a disciplined investor and look at those numbers. When you factor in contribution margin, is this product consistently hitting your contribution margin numbers? There are some products that we have where we were still profitable, but the contribution margin was less than our desired amount, let's say around the 10 to 20% range, and we knew we could take that money and put it into a better product. In which case, our sole focus for the product that wasn't doing well was to basically let it go, get our cash back, and reinvest it in a product that does way better for us in terms of those numbers. It's really important, guys, that you understand the ROI and you stick and be disciplined and stick to the numbers that you want to stick to. I highly recommend that you don't pursue any product that is less than 100% ROI. It's not going to be profitable in the long run. It's not going to be worthwhile. And there are a lot more products out there that are a good value for your time. The sad reality, guys, is that some products just aren't going to work. And the sooner that you accept this, the faster you're going to be able to move through and add more and more products to your portfolio. Don't get discouraged by having a bad product. This happens to us all the time. And that's part of our strategy. That's part of our process. We understand that when we launch a product, there's a chance that it might not work out well, in which case we just try to take the learning lessons from that experience and then move on and find a better product. So once again, don't get stuck in trying to make a bad product better. If you know it's a bad product and you know that deep in your heart and it's not doing well despite anything that you do, maybe you're better off just letting go of that product and putting it into something that's better. And the third reason why sellers don't do well or they don't, their product doesn't do well or is not profitable on Amazon is because they're just not targeting the right keywords. Now, keyword exposure is one of the most important things for getting as much traffic to your listings as possible. And when it comes to keyword research, there are so many different keywords that your product could potentially target. Oftentimes, we find that sellers will target only two keywords or three keywords that are extremely broad. Let's say, for example, you sell a garlic press and you notice that all the impressions from using the tools, there are 30,000 exact search impressions for the word kitchen utensil. You know that's not relevant. That's not relevant to garlic press specifically, and targeting that keyword is not gonna be of any benefit to you. It's really important that you try to target a bunch of long tail keywords that you think you have a good chance of landing on the first page for. Now, that means that a really popular product might be ranked really well for really high converting keywords that have a lot of high search volume, but that means that there are potentially a bunch of other longer tail keywords that have anywhere from 800 search impressions or more that you can target and land for the first page. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your product is ranked for as many keywords as possible. And that's how you sustain your listing. And that's how you build revenue and organic sales into your listing, by ranking for as many keywords as possible. If you're only targeting two or three, then you, you've lost the war. You need to do a lot more. And targeting really competitive keywords is not gonna help you because it's only gonna serve to number one, discourage you, and two, it's gonna be really difficult for you to rank for those keywords to begin with. So I highly recommend that you target a longer tail keyword phrase products or keywords and use that and try to stick for the first page and it'll be a lot easier for you to start ranking for the more broad keywords as you keep going. And guys, there are so many tools out there to help you get this done. I highly recommend a tool called seller.tools. There's also Zonwords, which is fantastic. And the reason why I really push these products is because they are able to pull real actual search volume from Amazon. Now, if you aren't using these tools, you're already starting one step back, okay? It's really important that you get real, real information that's directly pulled from Amazon. And this is gonna help you find those keywords. So make sure you're using a quality tool that actually pulls this information. There are a lot of tools out there that don't actually do this. A lot of it is based on guesses. Um, but what you wanna do is you wanna get a keyword research tool that gives you exact search impressions and also gives you a sense of how relevant your listing is and whether you're indexed for those keywords that you're targeting. All right, guys, I just went over the three main reasons that I find sellers aren't profitable or successful on Amazon. And let's summarize it real quick. Number one, not knowing your numbers. There's so many sellers who don't understand on a per skew basis whether they're profitable or not because they don't factor in their PPC costs, their marketing costs. Make sure that you factor that in after everything so that you know how much money you're actually producing and come and identify a contribution margin percentage number that you're happy and comfortable with. It's important that you stick to those numbers so that you can consistently make sure that your business is churning a profit. Number two, don't get married to a product. Oftentimes, sellers get stuck to a product because they want to believe that it's going to work, when the reality is that the numbers are pointing them in the opposite direction. Listen to the numbers and know when to give up on the wrong product and put money into the right product, and that will lead you in the right direction. And number three, make sure that you're targeting keyword search terms that aren't too competitive so that you can stick for the first page. 
Okay, you want to target keywords that at least have 800 search impressions, and you want to get to the first page for those keywords. If you're targeting keywords that have way too many search impressions and are too competitive, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to stick. So start slowly and start building up to that point where you get as much broad reach as possible, and it'll be a lot easier for you to stick for the front page on those more competitive keywords. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to get more news about Private Label, go ahead and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.